Hi, I'm Old North Specialist, Dr. Jackson Crawford. There has been a recent CNN story about the world's oldest rune stone, and so that always sort of picks up the search volume on rune stones and oldest rune stone and things like that. So I wanted to make kind of an index video where people looking for more information about this could find some, as I've covered this find a little bit on this channel, and I can point you to more information about it and related things. So first of all, Old Norse versus runes, what are, you know, let me just basically define some terms if you're new to the subject. The Old Norse language is what we call the language of Scandinavia from the Viking Age, so about 800 to about the Black Death, so late 1300s. What we're talking about with this oldest runestone is something much earlier, but also from Scandinavia. So in that earlier time period, uh, we're really talking about Proto-Norse right? It's a proto language to the Old Norse language, right? This is something that's as different from Old Norse as Old Norse is from modern Norwegian or Swedish. At the earliest end of that, we're even kind of talking about like proto-Germanic because Norse is ultimately a Germanic language. It's a different thing from German. A Germanic language like English or German is, and all of those languages were originally written in the runic alphabet. What are runes? Runes are an alphabet consisting in the earliest form of 24 letters. We call that the Elder Futhark. Now, there have been a lot of attempts over the years to link the 24 letters of the Elder Futhark to other alphabets because there are some clear similarities. For instance, the letter for the R sound looks like an R. The letter for the F sound looks like an F. Not all letters look like letters in the Roman alphabet or other familiar alphabets, but there is some kind of connection with some other alphabet. This isn't this isn't created ex nihilo. This is created from something else. Now, a big part of the huge mysterious question of well, where does this alphabet, which is related to other alphabets but not identical with them, where does it come from? Right? And so one of the most convenient answers to that, which might be correct, is that the Roman alphabet is the donor alphabet, right? So the alphabet that we use today to write English and most other Western European languages is uh, then held to be the source for the runic alphabet. Now, why the runes are so different from the Roman alphabet is a little bit hard to answer then. Uh, why are they in a completely different order is actually a, a, a huge question that arises no matter what alphabet, but certainly with the Roman alphabet too. Um, at least there's kind of an argument from place and time, because of course the Roman Empire was a major political force, to put it mildly, in the late centuries BC, early centuries AD, Roman Empire or preceding Roman Republic. But the earlier in time that you go with runes, the less likely it is that they are derived from the Roman alphabet. Because as the Roman Empire spread, they spread their version of an alphabet derived from a Western Greek alphabet, Again, the alphabet we still use today for English, French, German, and all these other languages. But there were originally many competing alphabets all around the Mediterranean world, all derived from different variants of the Greek alphabet itself, ultimately derived from a version of the Phoenician alphabet, which has a distant sister alphabet in today's writing system for Hebrew and even more distant uh, relatives elsewhere in the world. Um, okay. The earlier you go, the less likely it is that runes are from the Roman alphabet, although some people will still drive them from the Roman alphabet. That's still the majority view, although not one I subscribe to. What's interesting about this oldest rune stone is that it might be, it might have writing from as early as 50 BC. That is much earlier than the previous oldest known writing in runes, which was a comb from Denmark dated to 160 AD. Now that comb is made of wood, an organic material that can be radiocarbon dated. The problem with something like a stone is you can't radiocarbon date it, right? The stone is 
you know, millions of years old, or, or it's, 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 you know, it, it, humans didn't make the stone to, to carve on. So you have to date radiocarbon material that's associated with the stone. And that's what's been done in this most recent study. So at uh, Cambridge, you can actually see the article uh, by the scholars themselves who have worked on this. And this is ultimately what something like the CNN article is based on. So nowadays, this stone is usually being referred to as the Sphingeru stone. And it comes from around uh, Hula, Norway. So that's uh, about the distance from Oslo, the capital uh, that uh, Boulder is from Denver in about the same direction for anyone that that reference means anything to. Um, and we first became aware of this publicly in January of 2023 with the announcement of um, this part of it, which says in the Elder Fulark, the oldest form of the runic alphabet, what looks like a woman's name, I would transcribe this Iliberug with that letter that looks like a O with a slash over it. That means the TH sound in English, then. Well, I'm having a hard time putting this in a good place on the screen. Um, Oh, that color is bad for this. Ivy Berg. Looks like a woman's name, potentially in Old Norse, the later language, which, you know, it's just, you have to get used to the fact that old is going to be actually later than something proto. Uh, this would be like Ivbjorg or something like that. Uh, there's also notice a lot of other scratchings here. Um, and it's interesting that the, uh, B letter has a, you know, normally B looks like a B, right? It looks like this, but here the B has, you know, five uh, bows to it, which is kind of, a, kind of weird. Even for early runic inscriptions, that's weird. And there's a lot of variation in letter shapes there. So we knew about that two years ago. Now, as more of this stone has been put together, we have more and more um, pieces of it. So there's this sequence, which may be a code. It could be something, uh, you know, I doubt that it's an acronym, but, um, you know, it could be something like an acronym. Uh, it doesn't seem to write out words. They do use a lot of codes in Old Norse, not this really early Proto-Norse. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, this is the earliest inscription we know about, but in the Old Norse period, you know about a lot of codes. So I wonder if this is some kind of code, but. Uh, I've applied a lot of the uh, keys that I'm used to from Old Norse rune codes, and I haven't been able to figure out what that might say. There's also this part, which is pretty interesting. Um, it says I, Ek, and then a name that ends in U. So that would be another woman's name, uh, as that's a, a, a feminine noun ending in, in Proto Norse. Made, painted the rune. And uh, that singular rune, because uh, it appears that at this early stage, rune means not the letter in, in Proto-Norse, but rather the entire inscription made in Proto-Norse. So that's pretty cool. Um, that verb uh, is, is used all the time. So read the article, uh, you know, actually get it from the horse's mouth if you're interested in learning more about this. And um, on my channel, you can find a lot more information about runes if you want a, uh, a background in it. Sometimes my videos are designed for people that already have done a lot of study about this. Sometimes they're designed to be just sort of a uh, uh, intro for anybody. So if you search my name and, and runes, you'll find a lot of relevant stuff. Um, sometimes I've visited rune stones and looked at them. This is the earliest video, this major rune find about this discovery, of course, we know a lot more about it now. Um, I did a free course in runes with a lot of different parts. This runes a free course part one has kind of just the basic intro material about runes. Uh, runes a free course part two talks about the questions of origins and gets into uh, some of my 
personal ideas about this. I don't believe that the runic alphabet is derived from the Roman alphabet. That's a minority view. Um, but I think a, uh, a one that can be well supported. I'll talk a little bit about a few more uh, videos that get into that. Um, then I have, and the Seeking Runes in Myth and History lecture gets into some of that idea, as does this Runes in the News video. Um, there is also some interviews with some of the people who are on this paper, the inscribed sandstone fragments of Hula Norway paper. Christer Vashus uh, has come on to talk to us about this find. Uh, actually, he talked to us about it two years ago. Um, he also talked about another important find from 2023, one in which uh, someone has identified as Odin's man in Proto-Norse, so uh, a little bit mysterious. He also came on to talk about dirty old Norse. That was fun. He talks about, uh, you know, basically the equivalent of curse words in old Norse, although it's not particularly related to early runes. We also had uh, Professor Crystal Silmer on to talk to us about tiny rune amulets from much later in in time. So I've talked to, to quite a few runologists, and I'd also like to draw your attention to an interview with David Stifter, who has his his work on writing in anomalous Greek-derived alphabets in uh, Celtic languages, such as Lepontic in the Alps in the ancient world, has influenced my thinking about the origin of the runes. That's a really good interview, whether you're interested in what I think about where runes come from or not. Excellent interview about uh, little known languages in the um, Celtic speaking world in, in, in ancient times. So dig around a little bit. Uh, and of course, if you're interested in more, uh, search the word Futhark and you'll find a lot of videos that get into um, both Elder Futhark, the original form of the runes that we see in this earliest known inscription, and then Younger Futhark, the realistic runes of the Viking Age, which were actually used in. Uh, in, in Viking Age writing of, of runes and are used also in my own writing in runes. And for example, Disney's Frozen, uh, I wrote the book with rune letters. Uh, you can still spot me in the special thanks uh, credits to that movie or in um, my the second edition of my Poetic Edda or my uh, Wanderers Hovmall journal. So there's a little, uh, little plug for some books at the end. Um, I hope that it helps you find some resources. I'll try to remember to put the Cambridge article in the video description and a pinned comment so that you can access it directly. But in general, remember that English language media is very often going to be dependent on, you know, one person who's not a specialist in the subject reading like one paper uh, and some Wikipedia articles and putting something together about it. It's a complicated subject with a lot of interacting languages, a lot of interacting alphabets, a lot of big questions and um, easy to get a little bit lost in. I do have a video, by the way, called Rune Resources with books about runes. That uh, is one top recommendation about just getting a basic reading about runes. There's this book by Michael Barnes, Runes, a Handbook, that you can find on Amazon. I'll try to remember to put a link to that in the description and pin comment too. Um, that book used to be really expensive, but maybe I recommended it enough that they recently reissued it in a, a cheaper form. So go find that if you're interested in a uh, view of this from a, uh, a, a a really good scholar who disagrees about the rune origin question with me, but that's fine. Scholars disagree about stuff. All right. Thank you to my patron supporters for continuing to support this channel, my mission to spread good information about Norse language, linguistics, runes, etc. without agendas. And, um, Thank you to those who watched otherwise. And for now, from beautiful Colorado, I'm wishing you all the best. So this video isn't overly long. Let me give you a quick word about my friends and partners in Grimfrost, a quick word about an offer that I have on Patreon, and then come back to talk about some grammar differences. First of all, Grimfrost, my good friends there in Sweden, uh, in Karlstad, they uh, make great replica Viking stuff, and they also sell other great replica Viking stuff or stuff for people interested in Vikings including my books. So especially if you're in Europe, check them out as a source for my books. And wherever you are, check them out as a source for cool Viking stuff like replica weapons, board games, uh, amulets, things like that. If you're into the Prozetti and you want to see that translation, uh, 
faster, you can always join my Patreon at the new Scold tier, where you get a uh, monthly live meeting with me where I'm going over uh, the most recent part that I've translated, showing you the Old Norse, showing you what I've done with it, um, taking your questions, feedback, etc. So you'll be the first people in the world to see or hear any part of that. So uh, check that out if you're interested.